WTA Tour Tennis. This week, we're in New York for the year-end championship. We say goodbye to the greatest champion of them all. We welcome Jennifer Capriati back in Philadelphia. And we meet Kimiko Date, Japan's number one player. New York and the elite of women's tennis gather for the year-end final, the Virginia Slims Championships. They're the top 16 players in the world, a chance to end 1994 on a high. It's Martina's last tournament before retirement. She's hoping to triumph at Madison Square Garden. Arantia knows if she wins, she goes to number one. But she's got some tough competition ahead. The championship sees the return of Steffi Graf following her back injury. But there's a queue of nervous hopefuls looking to steal her title. I had a bit of the jitters last year. It was my first, uh, first time I played here, but... Um... I know what to expect this year, and uh, really, I am looking forward to my match. Really, it's just amazing to be here with the world's best players. It's like a dream, but being here is not enough. I want to win some matches. But whoever wins at Madison Square Garden, and whoever ends the year at number one, they will inevitably be upstaged by the last professional appearance of the greatest ever women's player. Martina Navratilova has always been one of my real idols, and I've learned an awful lot of things from watching her play. We're all completely different as players. But watching her play has always been especially good. And being able to beat her on some occasions has also been quite special. Now, Vatilova's first round match was against Sabatini. It was clear that if her will to play was gone, the athleticism and touch were as good as ever. In the end, though, Martina was outplayed by an inspired display from Sabatini. At 6-4, 5-2 down, Navratilova faced a match point. Well, I was too busy backpedaling, really, to uh, get too emotional about anything else. I really didn't uh, get that one until I was down match point. <laughs> and I thought, okay, you know, it's going to be the last point I have to play. Uh, but it was too late by then. End to an illustrious career, honored with an emotional ceremony after her match with Sabatini. The New York crowd, witnesses to so many of her triumphs, now marking the end of a unique career. Harley Davidson, a surprise gift from the tour, a fitting tribute to her power and speed. And a banner bearing her name, a permanent fixture henceforth in a stadium she made her own. to the climax of the year's tournaments. 16 of the top women competing in Madison Square Garden. Lindsay Davenport in her first year as a full-time professional was the only American in the semi-finals. Her opponent, Mary Pierce, who defeated Steffi Graf in the previous round. Although Mary is known for her powerful shot, on the day it was Lindsay who kept Mary on her toes, winning her around the court. all the angles, but even when she came to the net, Mary never seemed to be able to settle into her game plan. Oh! As it happened in the past, when Mary is trying too hard, the ball goes out. So with that shot, the match was won 6-3, 6-2 and Lindsay Davenport has a place in the final. Competing for the other place, Kimiko Date in her debut at Madison Square Garden. She had defeated Conchita Martinez in the quarterfinals. Her opposition, Gabriella Sabatini, who had not won a title for two and a half years. In the first set, 
expect Kamiko surprised Gabriella. She was consistent in her shot play and lied in her movement on the court. making use of her full variety of shots, cross court, slice and spin. But on this point, Kamiko kept the rally going. It has to be the best point of the tournament, but the second set goes to Sabatini, six love. Kamiko had a break to go two love up, but the result, 4-6, six, 6-3, six six meant a place in the final for Gabriella Sabatini. Maybe it was the inspirational play of her opponent, maybe it was the excitement of the occasion, but when did you last see a loser enjoying herself so much? She's the most exciting prospect Japanese tennis has ever seen. Determination, speed and powerful ground strokes have taken her to the top. Kamiko Dati was born left-handed but forced to play with her right hand. There's a custom in Japan that is really quite old-fashioned. Some people don't really approve of left-handed women, and so my father decided he would try to correct my left-handedness. I mean, I still write with my left hand, but because they made me change, I eat with my right. It really can get quite confusing at times. Her first Virginia Slims finals have been exhilarating but draining. After victory over the Wimbledon champion and three long sets with Sabatini, it's time for Kamiko to indulge herself. But whatever her success on court, other challenges face her off it. I think it is very difficult because she is Japanese and obviously, and she also respects her Japanese culture very much. And very traditional, old fashioned. So I think it's very hard for her to be around um, players and uh, people who are really open. But I think she'll, she'll get used to it more or less within you know, a couple more years or so. Cameras follow wherever she goes, but it's nothing like the attention she gets at home. In Japan, her name was recently linked with a top movie star. In the few weeks she spends there each year, her life is barely her own. I mean, I'm not really that famous in Japan. I'm not really what you would call a big star. I am known well enough that I can't do whatever I want to do. It's nice for me to be in a foreign country like now, because I can walk around town without being looked at or recognized. It means that I can take things easy here. Taking it easy is hardly a fair description of Dante's impressive debut at Madison Square Garden. Although, in between matches, she did find the time to do some serious shopping. New York clearly appeals to her. Earlier this year, she was a surprise US Open quarter-finalist. Her performance this time in New York is another danger sign for the world's top women. We're seeing much more of Kamiko Dati. And so back to Madison Square Garden and the final of the Virginia Slims tournament, the only five-set women's tournament of the year. Gabriella Sabatini plays Lindsay Davenport. Two powerful players, and although Lindsay had sailed through earlier rounds, it was Gabriella who had the larger range of shots. Despite the length of some of the rallies, Gabriella never really looked in trouble. Sabatini 
really had it on a tournament in two and a half years, but her eyes were now on the prize. She had beaten Navratilova in the opening round. Now it was just one more to go. Say it was an unfortunate way for Lindsay Davenport to lose in the final, but others may say it was an element of luck that was on Sabatini's side on the day. So at last success, 6-3, 6-2, 6-4, her fellow professionals applaud as winner Gabriella Sabatini received the Virginia Slims 1994 trophy. from Betsy Nagelson. In doubles, the server is usually considered the aggressor. But when you're the returner, you have enough options to make this position aggressive and offensive enough to try to control the point right from the start. The most effective and most widely used return is the cross court. If you hit it solidly and place it well enough, you can force the server into hitting an off-balance volley. Use topspin that will take the server out wide, or a chip that forces her to bend low for a shoestring volley. To make the cross court more effective, try mixing it up with two other options. First, try a down the line return. It's a tougher shot to make because it's going over the highest part of the net, but you have to use it enough to keep the opposing net player pinned to a smaller area. It can also keep the server not entirely sure just how quickly to make her way to the net. As a return, the lob can be a very offensive shot, but it must be played at the right moment which is when the opposing net player is just starting to make her step forward. The lob is also a very effective way for you to get to the net to allow you to take over the offensive position. Remember, the returner should always attempt to move forward at the first opportunity to put your team on equal ground with the serving team. And by mixing up your returns, you keep them guessing on every point. Virginia Slims of Philadelphia saw Jennifer Capriati playing her first competitive match since the first round of the U.S. Open in 1993. She drew a difficult opening match opponent in Anka Huber. Jennifer lost and ran out of steam in the last set. Her stamina not yet what it could be. But afterwards, she felt confident about her return to the circuit. I learned that I really uh, love this game, and it doesn't matter to me whether I win or lose. You know, I experienced a lot. Um, I got wiser, I think, and uh, you know, found out what makes me more happy, what makes me happy. And um, so I learned a lot about myself. Anka Huber, winner over Capriati, went on to make it to the final, seeded number six. Her opponent was Mary Pierce, the number two seed. Huber dominated in the first set, taking it six love. Mary Pierce fought well in the second and hung on to the tiebreak. In the third, Huber took control again. Now she leads 5-2 and has two match points on Pierce's serve. Brave attacking play at match point round. Could Mary save another at 30 40? Huber <laughs> working on Pierce's backhand, but a great get from Mary to keep herself in the match. She took that game to hang on 3 5, and it's 30 all. A fierce topspin forehand from Hoover right on the line, making Mary slightly concerned. Probably because it gave Hoover another match point. She needn't have worried so much. Anka Hoover double faulted. Pierce had fought back to five all, but Hoover got tougher. girls reacted to the drama of the situation, five all in the final set, and they produced their best tennis, particularly Mary at Deuce. But it was Anka Huber who took the game to lead 6-5 and made the most of her final match point. Thank you. 
witnessed a terrific final and superb play from Mary Pierce. And of course the champion, Anka Huber. So this is how the final year-end rankings stand. Finishing her career in the top ten, Martina Navratilova. At seven, the Virginia Slims champion. Tai taking number three and number two spot. But despite injury, Graf still ends on top. And so the tour comes to an end for another year. It's been an exciting and eventful 1994 for women's tennis with plenty of top action and new faces. The start of the year belonged to Steffi Graf. She dominated the opposition. At the Australian, Graf blasted away through the opposition to achieve the 15th Grand Slam title of her career. Throughout the spring, she remained indomitable, and her opponents would congratulate themselves for even the slightest achievements, as Natalia Zareva admitted after meeting the final at Lipton. Um, I'd like to say congratulations to Sophie. She played a very good match. I thought I did good win in the first set. But still, it was another shining trophy for Steffi Graf. Uh, of a dream for Steffi. It was time for the new face to enter the spotlight. took on Graf in the semi-finals of the French Open. She put an end to Steffi's dominance and reached her own first Grand Slam final. It was a moment in her career she will always remember. To win the title though, there was one woman Pierce had to beat. It wouldn't be easy. Sanchez Sanchez Vicario knew that this year Roland Garros belonged to her and she wasn't about to let anyone take that away. In only two sets, the title was hers, five years on from her first victory here at the age of 17. that there was no stopping her and in the Canadian Open Graf found that finally Aranja had all the answers. I'm on a contract to play Aranja. The last time it was my turn, this time it's her turn. <laughs> and victory against Graf in the US Open confirmed it. to be proud of in 94 as its number two player Conchita Martinez can testify. On ladies final day at Wimbledon Martinez took on Martina Navratilova and ended her hopes of a 10th title there in her final year on the tour. crowds were introduced to a new star and they said an emotional farewell to a former one
missing from the player lists in 94 was that of Monica Sellis. Hopes that she would return at the Australian Open at the beginning of the year were dashed. It was a sad loss to the tour. Another player missing was Jennifer Capriati. The pressures of the tour became too much for her, and she announced a long leave of absence from the game. Her decision raised important issues for women's tennis, as journalist John Parsons points out. When you get chances, and some of the ones we've had in recent years, and now the problem with Jennifer Capriati, who's fallen out of love with the game at such an early age, it's such a tragedy, that brings the game into disrepute. So was it time to reconsider the age that women players should be allowed to turn professional? It was hard to find agreement. Oh, I think they've been way too young. I don't think anybody should be a professional before the age of 18. Not so hard, because if they're ready at 14, they should be able to turn pro. Oh, I don't think, have any doubt at all. I think it should be 16. I think 15 is a good age. In 1997, players will not be able to play fully professional until they're 18, although they can play a limited amount of pro events from the age of 16. It gave an opportunity to today's young hopeful. The year saw the debut of some exciting new stars. In Zurich in October, the Swiss 14-year-old Martina Hingis played her first professional event and fully justified the hopes of her public by beating Patty Bendit to go through to the second round. A few weeks later, there was another debut when Venus Williams, also 14, played in Oakland, California. And next year, the Russian Anna Kornikova is expected to join the tour. The future of women's tennis looks very bright indeed. As the youngsters emerge, the tour said its last goodbye to former champions. Manuela Malieva Franier announced her retirement. And former Wimbledon doubles champion Liz Smiley will be leaving the tour next year. And the greatest player of them all, Martina Navratilova, called it a day too. For two decades, she has entertained and inspired players and fans alike. And she's done more than ever.